All right, uh, I'll kick it off. I just want to say uh, thank you to my staff. Uh, really successful night, but a lot of countless hours. Travel, go into um, getting players like this and, and on our team. I want to thank our coaches for the partnership that we have, the alignment. Um, really good partnership in terms of getting uh, all the drafts uh, prep done and the players lined up on our board, which is great. And then uh, lastly, just want to thank Kevin and George for the resources that they put into to this um, that allow us to do this job at a high level. Um, really excited. If you told me we would end up with both Caleb and Rome uh, weeks ago, I would have uh, said you were crazy. Um, but they were two guys that obviously we were really excited to have. Not only are they really good players, but really good people as well that are going to continue to enhance our, our locker room and our team moving forward. So I'll open up to questions. Ryan, when did you know that Caleb was going to be the answer for you guys, the direction you are going to go at quarterback? Yeah, it's kind of two parts. Like when you watch the tape, um, it was easy to see the talent um, and wanted him on our team. But it was all about going through the process. So once we got through the 30 visit and spent time with him, got him with some of the guys on our team, it kind of felt good about the person, the culture fit. Um, knew at that point that he was going to help us and, and we were ready to go. Ryan, you, had, you guys had three breakout groups to determine receiver, tackle. You know, who, you know who won that competition. I don't know. <laughs> uh, right, so I asked you the other day about, you know, if you had an opportunity to pick. I don't know where Rome was on your personal board, but I said if you had the opportunity to pick the third receiver or maybe the top of his top D tackle, how would you kind of go about that process? What made receiver be ultimately the answer for you? Um, I'd go back one step. It wasn't so much like a specific uh, position group. The players, you know, like I told you the other day, Ian and I sequenced the board out all the way across. And Rome was extremely high on that list. That's why uh, I was nervous that he wasn't going to be there at nine. Um, our simulations, it was about a 50-50 shot if he was going to be there. Um, but as it started to unfold, Ian had to hold me back from not trying to trade up and do something crazy to get him. Uh, but it, it ended up working out really well. What was Ryan, your knowledge on the front end? I'm sorry. What was your knowledge on the front end of the workout that they had with, with Rome and, and Caleb with having DJ and King out there? Yeah, I found out. Was it two days ago uh, that that popped out? And I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, still, at that point, I was nervous that that wasn't going to be able to work out or we'd have to do something to, to make that work out. Um, so when I found that, I was, it was cool. And obviously now the, that group's worked together, which is, which is good. Ryan, we talked to Caleb, you see, you see all the talent. That's obvious. You see what he brings to the table. On your end, how do you make sure that the Bears get this right? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, one, the infrastructure has to be there, and I think we've we've done that part to have the talent around uh, our quarterback now. Uh, I think the other thing is it's going to be our in, our entire organization is going to have to be on the same page um, on how we handle this, how we develop uh, Caleb. Uh, but I'll also say that it's it's I think we have a really good approach with all of the players, um, and I think that's that's different than maybe it was in the past the way that we, we take it really serious in terms of the development from a nutritional standpoint to performance, um, to mental skills, um, to how our coaches teach. Like, I think we've made some really good strides there, um, but it, it's gonna take everybody and everyone's gotta be on the same page. Uh, we gotta adjust to strengths and weaknesses that the player has. Ryan, uh, Caleb said, you know, we had, I asked him a question about the history, the Bears history of quarterback and how it hasn't gone well. And he said he had questions for you guys and you guys are very, explain things to him. What were those conversations like? Um, I think he just kind of wanted to get a feel for everybody in the organization. What, what, we, what were we about in terms of like, what's our, our direction? What's our North Star? How are we going to get there? Um, and I think through our actions, we've, we've shown that. Um, and, you know, history is the history. Like, I, I'm kind of done talking about it. Like, we go back so much all the time and that, those days are over. Um, so we're bringing players in here that want to really just change everything up and, and do things a different way. Um, obviously, we love our history here, um, but it hasn't been smooth recently, um, and it's time to change. So I just I feel like we got to stop going back all the time. Ryan, what are, what are the specific aspects of Rome's skill set that he was the number one receiver for you guys and that just really was a pull for you? Man, I don't know where to start with that guy. Uh, 
first of all, human being, what a great guy, um, work ethic, um, just blue collar on the way he goes about things. Uh, but as a receiver, he can align anywhere, inside, outside. Uh, you love his uh, ability to, to finish in contested situations. Plays strong, uh, plays big, run after a catch is very good. He's a punt returner as well. Um, I mean, the kids just put time in and got better and better every single year, and he's a winner. Uh, can impact the game at any moment. If, you, if you're a quarterback and you're in doubt, you want to just go give a guy an opportunity to go finish, he's, he's your guy. Um, he just, he's done that consistently. Ryan, was, Ryan, after nine, what was the rest of the night like for you guys? Was there any talk of maybe even trying to get back into the first round for a third pick? What, what was the rest of the night like after the ninth pick? Uh, every year there's like that feeling around like the teens or 20s. You're like, maybe we'll get back in. But then you start looking at what it would take and that we would just do damage to ourselves um, for this year and, and for next year. We don't have a ton of draft capital this year to even – really do that. So um, we just kind of took it all in, patient, kind of talked about our evaluations, look forward for tomorrow and see um, how that's going to play out, what positions are going to go, what opportunities we're going to have. Right, right. Were you getting con- calls for number nine? Were you getting calls for number nine? Yeah, yeah. There's there was a bunch of calls. We made calls. Every, it, I think that's just kind of standard practice. Everyone just kind of get a feel for where everybody's at, but nothing like crazy. Right. And I know you had you a different perspective when you watched Caleb in 2023. But I'm curious whether it was Oklahoma or his Heisman year. Did you happen to catch a game of his or remember kind of the first time you he caught your eye? Uh, I was watching the that uh, Texas-Oklahoma game for sure. And it was like, who who is this kid? Um, some of those throws were ridiculous. Um, and then you kind of track players as you go along and watching Addison. Um, what was it, last year or two years ago? Uh, you saw the talent. Right, right. From that's gone into this quarterback decision and leading up to this point, well, what's the feeling like for you to be at the finish line and to have Caleb as your quarterback? Finish line of the process? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it feels it feels great. Um, it's a guy that has all the tools, um, but it's going to take hard work. It's going to take getting into sync with his teammates. Um, there's a long road ahead uh, to develop the places where he needs to, needs to develop to win games and, and bring a championship here. Uh, but the beautiful thing is we have the right people here. We have the right teammates. Um, and I feel really good about it. Ryan, as it, as it turned out, how many quarterbacks in this class were worth starting over with a rookie as opposed to keeping Justin? Uh, can you say that again? Bro? Sorry. How many quarterbacks in this class would it were, in your mind, were worth starting over with a rookie as opposed to keeping Justin? I don't know. I, I didn't even get down. Like, I didn't even think that way. Um, it was Caleb, and, and obviously we watched the other players, uh, but decided on Caleb. Right. What, Ryan, you to- that, how, what has that journey been like for you from 2022 <clears throat> to the group you have now? Where you, I mean, the, the group you inherited, and then some of the pitfalls along the way to end up with what you have now. Yeah, I'm pumped. I'm pumped. We've done good work. Um, we brought again. It's one thing to bring talent in, but it's it's another to bring talent that like they're good people. Um, and they're great teammates. I mean, the stuff that these guys have been doing over the last few weeks is incredible, just seeing how close everybody is. Um, but, yeah, we, we, we're looking today just what the roster looks like. And um, it's been a journey. I know it hasn't been that many years, but it feels like it's been a lot of years. <laughs> so um, we've done good work. But, obviously, like I said the other day, we got to win. Ryan, how would you say uh, Caleb and Shane have hit it off? And what was his involvement? And, and, you know, obviously it seems like it was an easy decision for you, but specifically he's going to be directing him on what to do. Yeah. No, that's been uh, really cool to see uh, from going out there on the pro day um, to hear about some of the Zooms um, that they've done uh, over the last few weeks, um, just getting to know each other, to talk ball. Um, so that, that relationship had to be there, and that was part of our process as well. Now that the first round is, o- the first round is over, I'm sure there are some guys that you thought maybe would have went and that they've slid out of that slid out of that first round. You always talk, often talk about flexibility. You guys got two seconds next year that give you some flexibility to maybe see what's available in terms of moving up tomorrow. Um, potentially, potentially, we'll see what the numbers look like. Um, 
and just kind of gauge if, if that's something we need to do. Is this right. a good feeling for you to have just the, the, the four picks, just having had double-digit picks, I think you had 10 last year, 11 the previous year, and now four. Does that does it feel empty at all? Like, I mean, I know that you're happy with what you did in the offseason and what you did with those picks, but it's got to feel strange to only have four picks. With one and nine, it doesn't feel that strange. Um, it'll feel strange after the fourth round. Uh, tomorrow I'll probably just go get a workout or something. Brian, you said earlier about not wanting to do something crazy and moving up. I mean, when did you get the sense this evening that Rome was going to be there at nine? When, I mean, were there nerves up there thinking the dominoes were starting to fall the right way for you guys? Yeah, there was definitely nerves. Um, but there was a couple moves ahead of us. Um, and then what we do, our pro staff does a really good job just identifying needs of different teams. Uh, our analytics team puts kind of percentages of where guys can go. Um, so we really tapped into that, and um, you know, once we got to like seven, we started feeling pretty good that he might make it. Was right. there one pick there right. that made you feel like he was going to fall your way? Like, what something happened before you? Um, not specifically, no. Well, the Atlanta pick, though. I mean, is that what? You, <laughs> no, you were expecting it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just happy it worked out that way. Brian, how do you how do you project uh, Caleb's intuition for the position? You know his instinct, like you know, sensing the blitz and manipulating defenses and just kind of willing a team over the finish line. How, how important is that to you? And, and uh, where how do you project that for Alec? Like, yeah. yeah, the instincts are for any position are so important. It's we we oftentimes look at things that you can coach and you can't coach. Um, and when you have the things you can't coach, and we can develop the other parts of it. You feel good about it. So he, he's got special instincts, um, awareness, especially in the pocket, to you know manipulate the pocket, get in and out of the pocket. Um, spatial f feel for space is uh, is special. Um, and I, that's his special sauce. And then once we kind of speed things up and, and start to identify different coverages, and he's got a you know there's an adjustment to an NFL offense that he's got to go through as well. So um, we're, we're really excited to work with the tools that he has. Right. Right. When, you, when you zeroed in on how Caleb operates in the clutch, what kind of stood out to you in, in big moments? Yeah, you look for poise, um, guys that, that the game kind of slows down for them in those critical moments, um, that they're capable of you know, making those special throws when you need them the most, especially down the stretch. Um, that, that clutch part's really, really, really good. Um, and you need that to win games for how many close games we have in this league. Um, you got to have guys that can finish, especially in like two minute drills and things like that. What about Perhaps just how he faced adversity? I know last year wasn't always easy for him. Yeah, uh, we had conversations about that, and I think it's the best thing that could have happened to him uh, because you're going to have that in the NFL. You're going to have the down uh, weeks, months, and you're going to have to find a, a way to get through them. You're going to have to tap into the different resources to get through them. Um, and get back to playing at a high standard. So um, I think going through that adversity helped him um, to continue to really find his edge, um, but also to recover when, when things don't go, go well. Kind of, kind of going back to Jason's question about the journey of the receiver room, where do you think along your own journey did you learn to kind of flush and move on from mistakes? Sometimes GM's kind of reluctant to acknowledge and then pivot from a mistake. You seem to be much more willing to say, eh, that didn't really work, let's move on. Yeah. Um, I think I would mentioned this before. Uh, you all know I played with Matt Ryan, um, and then he was with the Falcons, and I called him for um, a question with the roster, and he just was like, the, the players always know. The locker room are always know. So if you're going to tell them to put their egos away or take ownership of things, but then you got someone that's going to hold on to, uh, you know, a certain player longer just because they picked them and they don't want that on, on their record, um, the players know. Um, and if you're going to be consistent, not a hypocrite, you, you need to do it the right way. Um, so that always just kind of was in my head. But uh, quarterbacks got so much responsibility, you know, on and off the field, right? With your teammates, with the media. What is it about Caleb that makes you think he's going to be able to handle that in this market with this team? Um, he's highly competitive, um, and he wants to be great, and he has passion for the game. If you have those, um, you're going to be fine in whatever environment that that you're in. Um, you know, obviously, 
through the ups and downs, you're gonna have to have thick skin and you're gonna make some mistakes here or there. And it's just how you recover and do you learn from it. That's that's the big thing. And and he's a guy that does learn from um, parts of his journey and parts of those, you know, adverse times and, and recover. So I think it'll be fine. It seems like he's got like a comfort in his own skin too. Yeah. He's got a, a lot of comfort in his own skin, which is good to see. You gotta have that. Thank you. Thank you.